we have a special day dedicated to the Direct Selling Education Foundation who has brought guest speakers in for us to hear from about the channel of direct selling. But who we have with us is Dave Merriman. This is Dave, and he is the Vice President for ACN Inc., which sells through the direct selling channel Telecommunications and Services. And then Brittany Vickery is the CEO and founder of Initials Inc., which is a direct selling also firm that does monogrammed items. Soft goods, handbags, organizers. Yeah. All so kinds thing, of things. you know, very interesting things. We're glad to have you. So this is a wide open discussion mm -hmm. that we want to have. So if any time you have a question, you know, just, just let us know. And uh, we'd really like to have it more as a dialogue than a presentation. Just to kind of help you guys get your get your head around the model, because we know you guys are starting from scratch, right? I asked Claire, I said, what do they know about direct selling? She was like, absolutely nothing. I was like, fantastic, that's awesome. But the way it was first described to me, which I think is a way that you can grab hold of pretty quickly, is that it's almost like direct selling is the third leg on a stool. So if you think about retail, right, you've got brick and mortar stores that you drive to, you do business with people, you engage with them. You've got internet sales where you're sitting at your computer or your smartphone and you're doing business across the internet. And then you have direct sales where you're doing business with someone in your community or at a home party or at an office party, those types of environments. You're engaging with one-on-one -on -one with a human being. So think about it like the third leg of that stool around just a different go-to-market strategy for bringing your products or your services as Dave's company has to market. Yeah. Our companies are in the space of helping people be in business for themselves, but not by themselves. And I think that's an interesting twist. You have the support and the, the backbone of a larger organization, but you are a 1099 independent entrepreneur doing your own thing. So the partnership with the Education Foundation is to come in and really show the power of the business model to those of you that are coming out of school or graduating or in school, just to begin to kind of unlock your thinking a little bit around the power that this model can hold for you personally, as well as you know maybe finding yourself like me wanting to start a business um, that offers the opportunity to other, other people across the country. It's a little bit about kind of what I teed up earlier on just kind of helping you get your head around it. Retail channel used by top brands. Many of you have heard other name brands that are out in the market that all of a sudden decide to do a little bit of a pivot, a different strategy, and go through the direct selling channel as well. Um, that is one way to do that. There are also companies like mine and like Dave's that this is exclusively what we do. So the only way you're going to get our products are if you engage with one of our consultants, which we call creative partners, um, in getting our products. So we exclusively design everything, but the only way you're going to obtain our products is to do business with one of our consultants. We do not compete with our sales folks. We actually channel everything through them. So it's a way to, to bring, the, bring your products to market. Heavy entrepreneurship focus. We actually call all of our creative partners CEOs because they are in charge of managing their own business and however how big they want to grow it. So another yeah. way to think of direct selling is think of it like micro franchising. Okay, <laughs> every time we have a new distributor start, they've got their own businesses, as uh, Brittany was saying. So <laughs> they're starting their own business and we're, we're here as a company to help support them in anything that we can do uh, to make their business grow better. The great part about it is flexibility too. So you can work as much or as little as desired. So we've got a lot of distributors that, that do this on a very part-time basis, maybe 10 hours a week. Some of them have, their other, have another business that they're doing. So during the peak times, they may not be able to work at all on their, on their ACN business. At other times, they may be able to put in you know, more time, 20, 30, 40 hours. So it provides that flexibility. And as Dave said, the flexibility piece is key, right? I say that we fill the gaps. We, we are a gap filler for most people. We are paying for soccer lessons, we're putting a kid through summer camp, we are making a car payment, we're helping with the mortgage, we're covering Christmas. Um, but there are other times and other stories, as I'm sure Dave's company has as well, where it's where the rubber meets the road and we're covering it all. So our compensation <coughs> plans, and this is a general statement, so we can give you more information about our individual ones if you'd like, but you know, the compensation plans in direct selling tend to reward, they reward personal sales as well as your team sales. So, as you build a team, you can recruit other people to be a part of your business, and then you also get a percentage on theirs as well. So there's a whole variety of different compensation plans in this industry that are really geared toward how do we generate more sales of, of products and how do we reward people appropriately for those. So you've got commissions, you've got bonuses, you've got team bonuses, you've got, you know, we were talking about incentive trips, trips. earlier. I leave tomorrow for a cruise, 200 <laughs> yeah. people taking them on a cruise. They so, earned it. Yeah. So there's incentive <laughs> trips as well that are part of that. You know, some companies have what they call car allowances too that can be part of that as well. It's all based on, a lot of it's based on volumes of sales. 
uh, in a particular period or in terms of how much they built over, over the course of their career. And you know, this is something, this is probably a phrase that you hear a lot in many different direct selling companies. So it's great that you use it because we use it all the time too. Because yeah. it's very simple and straightforward, which is work for yourself, but never by yourself. So the company's there to support the direct sellers at all times. Now, products are usually that entry point for everybody. If you ask anybody who joins a company, it's usually, usually more often than not that they are interested in the product and they want to learn more about that. Rarely, it does happen, people come in and say, I want to build a big business. I've done this before with another company. I know exactly what to do and I'm ready to kind of come in and get started. For us, our um, consultant base, the majority of them are brand new to direct sales. They just love the product. They're passionate about what we offer and they want to be a part of that from a product standpoint. Okay, so this shows some of the demographics of direct selling. So you can see the, uh, the largest chunk uh, people is in that 35 to 40-year-old 40, 40 brackets. That's people that are really learning, you know, you, you, for the most part, looking to earn some extra income. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty evenly spread. You know, your group here under 25, we got to get this number bigger. Uh, so that's what we're working on too. But it's really, it's really a wide range of demographics. Then on the gender side, you can see it's, it's largely female, um, you know, still about 25% male. How is but that ratio in your company? Completely though? different. So we're probably 60% yeah. male, 55 to 60% male. Um, but we also see many, many more couples yeah. uh, doing the business together. So Long Island, New York, we have 36 creative partners within a three mile radius. All of them are wildly successful. Why? Because they're in totally different groups. Their kids go to different schools. They go to a different church. They're involved in community activities. This one plays hockey. This one plays football. This one plays soccer. They run in totally different circles, even though they live within three miles of each other. So it kind of flies in the face of competition and what you would think. We actually see stronger teams with a greater nucleus of people that are together because there becomes brand familiarity. And so all of a sudden, when somebody's heard something three or four or five times, it becomes, oh, yeah, I've heard of that. OK, great. I'll do business with you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So they do that in their communities. So how they choose to run their business is completely up to them within the boundaries of what our um, policies and procedures say. I kind of say that we're a little bit, and I don't know how Dave would feel about this, I kind of consider us like guardrails, right? We're giving them the ability to run a business within these guardrails, but ever how they want to do it, whether it's working with a cheer group or going into an office park or going into a doctor's office or doing whatever, customer acquisition, however they want to do it, and they get crazy creative on how they do it, however they want to play within those guardrails is up to them. Okay, so you know, one of the things we want to talk about is how do you identify reputable companies? So you know, the main thing is it seems pretty simple, but what's their focus? So is, their focus of the, is the focus of the business on selling either products or services? Okay, now that may seem like of course it is. But when you hear about pyramid schemes and other you know, less reputable companies, yeah. uh, those are companies that are really more about recruiting, paying for recruiting, and not about really selling a, a product or service. Yeah, and uh, for us, it's just where is that line? And my personal philosophy is how far away from that line can we possibly get, right? I don't want to flirt anywhere near the line of, of there being any question about how our creative partners are compensated or who's a customer and who's a creative partner. You'll hear a lot of conversation in our space around delineation, segmentation in the market is a hot topic right now. Can you, be, can you look at your company and determine who is a customer and who is a distributor? And for us, it's very clear, very well defined, which is why I, I feel very safe and love what we do so much because we don't kind of deal with all that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I feel like I've learned in this short little amount of time. Let's thank them and y'all have a great day. Thank you. 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 Thank you.